Okay, welcome back to EMC World. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of EMC World. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Dave, uh, what do you think so far? Well, John, you know, it's, it's more the same, right? I mean, EMC World is just a flood of, uh, of announcements, innovation, customers. It's just, you know, the federation keeps getting bigger. You know, cloud is obviously a big theme, and Sean Weedage is here. He's the CTO of Enterprise Solutions at Rackspace. Uh, Sean and I were on a panel yesterday in the solution providers uh, uh, area. Sean, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks. Appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Yeah, so it was, a good, it was a good interaction yesterday. I thought, you know, the theme of the, the panel, John, was you know, how, to, how can EMC's partners collaborate, uh, you know, and, and cooperate and compete at this, all at the same time. You know, this whole eco, ecosystem notion. And it, the conversation, Sean, yesterday, just, it just kept coming back to OpenStack. You know, there, there was something about OpenStack <laughs> having so much momentum, it's got to have propelled your business in a big way in terms of just interest. So talk about your, part of the business a little bit, and then we can get into the, the trends you're seeing, and of course, OpenStack. No, absolutely, so I've been at Rackspace about a dozen years, and, and Rackspace has been around about 15 years, and you know, one of the world's leading providers of managed hosting traditionally, coming out of the SMB space, and now making big inroads in the enterprise space. So, um, OpenStack was started off as a collaborative effort between Rackspace and NASA, and what we did was we had a, a couple of components that allowed us to create a, a cloud operating system, if you will. NASA brought to the table a compute orchestration tier, and we brought to the table in an object store. So we paired those together, put them out in the uh, open source community, and, and the project has really taken off. And it, it's done a couple of things. The project has really gained critical mass in terms of the uh, ecosystem and, and providers that are involved in participating, but it's also really propelled Rackspace to more of a, a, a household name. We'd always had a, a great niche and a great market carved out for us, but we're seeing more and more enterprises having us come in and talk about cloud transformation and, and how they can leverage OpenStack and the benefits of that to, to propel their, their organizations. Yeah, we had uh, Pat Gelsinger on before, our CEO of VMware, and you know, we've been talking about, wow, look at all this momentum that OpenStack has. At first, we, you know, we, th we thought, okay, it's a buffer against Amazon, and now we're saying, wow, it's really in the mix in the enterprise. We asked Pat Gelsinger about that, he said, hey, if customers want to go OpenStack, you know, if service providers want to go OpenStack, they're going to go OpenStack. We have to play in that environment, and that's a very powerful statement you know, about OpenStack, isn't it? No, absolutely, and you know, they're, they're extremely important. Their purchase of Mycera and the software-defined networking capability that, that's been involved from the very early stages of OpenStack. So we see VMware and, and the EMC as the broader organization very committed still going forward, and they have different use cases. You know, customers have used them in different ways, so we look forward to, to continue to collaborate and cooperate with VMware. Yeah, so I mean, I watched a lot of the coverage, John, at the OpenStack Summit, and you know, David Floyer actually said it was the best analyst event he'd ever been at because it wasn't BS. It was just like, okay, we're gonna, here's what we're doing. We're going to cut right to the chase. With customers talking. Yeah, I mean, Dave, I, mean, I, I was there for three days, so it was pretty clear. I mean, you know, it was all signal, not a lot of noise. And our slogan is extracting the signal from the noise. That's what the Cube does, and and it was there. It was nonstop, pure developers, pure uh, excitement, uh, pure demand not just from developers and alpha geeks tire kicking, but there was genuine interest from the enterprise. Now, you know, that, that is really, to me, the telltale sign that the developer mindset is coming into the enterprise. So, so Sean, I got to ask you, I mean, Rackspace, I mean, I was, remember talking to Lou Mormon and the guys, you know, in 2000 and early 2009 around free OpenStack, and you guys had challenges. I mean, OpenStack, didn't have a cloud, you bought cloud sites, you realized, and you're all open source guys, you realized you, you had to get this up and running, so you created an ecosystem. You, in a way, primed the pump for OpenStack, and you don't get a lot of credit for that, as much credit as you should. Um, NASA stepped at the table, but more importantly, you built a developer mindset, the DevOps. So talk about your experience at Rackspace, knowing that culture, Compare and contrast it to the trends happening in the enterprise, where this is a developer message. I mean, you hear you hear EMC saying developer. Uh, absolutely, it's been a it's been a, a, sh a real shift, a pendulum swift shift in terms of going from the traditional infrastructure driven focus to the, the DevOps and, and software deployment capabilities that that accelerate time to market for our customers. So it, within Rackspace, it's been a real shift. My background is on the I come out of the sales engineering background, solution design heavily focused on networking, compute, storage, and traditional take days, deal with inventory, get it through supply chain, build in infrastructure, tune it, tweak it, test it, deploy it. And the new model. Classic hosting environment. Classic hosting model. Yeah. And the new model is customer comes in, they've already made their decisions, they come to our, our website, they spin things up very quickly. So what we're finding is that we're having to 
get more involved, our, our concept of fanatical support that's carried us this far, traditionally was based more upon a, a response, help keep the customer's application up and running. We're finding more and more is that we're having to speak to different people in our, in our customer organization, so instead of dealing with the infrastructure guys, now we're talking to the developers, and we're, having to fi and we're finding that the fanatical support piece really is applying earlier in the engagement process. So helping customers understand what application should, should be go to the cloud, which cloud consumption model makes the most sense, and, and how do I get the most efficiency out of my developer organization and be able to do rapid prototyping, rapid provisioning, and rapid deployment for customers. And you seeing how how realistic are you seeing that in the enterprise? I mean, OpenStack doesn't have a lot of you know notches on its belt yet in terms of massive successes. You guys did showcase out use cases, and you had a lot of proud and loud and proud people standing tall on the stage. But in the scheme of the of the of the evolution, there's a lot of interest in this, and you're seeing now some of those proof points. It's still early. I mean, it, and that's you guys. <laughs> That's developers, the canary in the coal mine. What about like the enterprises? I mean, where are they in the, on the life cycle? So the enterprises, you know, I've spent a lot of time out here this week and the last few weeks meeting with, with enterprise customers that are, that are bringing us in to talk about you know, how do they make that transition. And so what's, what's compelling about OpenStack is it's allowing customers to take a look at and leverage a public cloud infrastructure and a very familiar capability on their private cloud infrastructure. So we're seeing customers that are, are kicking the tires on the public cloud and, and saying, okay, we're going to start building this, we're going to do some test and dev out here, and then over time they're bringing those applications and looking to see do they really belong in the public cloud or do I get better efficiencies or, or better uh, better um, economics or, or better delivery or, or control by bringing that into a private cloud infrastructure so the the Corporate IT organizations are, are struggling to try and figure out how to get the benefits of utility and how to get that fast time to market, that, that fast delivery that their business units can go out and get from an Amazon or, or a Rackspace cloud. So you know, we're, we're having to help them figure out how to accelerate their IT delivery process and OpenStack is, a, is an ideal way to be able to do so that. So talk about the new Viper thing and the EMC impression there. I mean, honestly, EMC's rolling out, you know, I, you know, I always say the, the, old, the old Polaroid picture, you know, but now it's Instagram picture. EMC's putting out a new image of themselves. I mean, they're talking about choice. They're talking about Dr. Evil lock-in pointing really at Amazon. So you're looking at a shift there. So you guys playing in an interesting market. What do you think of that? I mean, obviously storage is a key component of what you guys do. Absolutely. You've been in that engineering side, and now you're looking at an app-friendly environment with orchestration, et cetera. I mean, what do you think of EMC and VMware and Pivotal and all this stuff. I, I think you know it, it's a great time to be in IT. Things seem to be moving faster than ever, and these these large organizations that are the, the traditional superpowers of IT delivery are having to reinvent themselves and find ways to be more consumer friendly. And EMC is is really showing their dedication, focus to that with the Viper project. You know, we we work with them very closely. We've been a very good partner. They've been very good to us over the years. Uh, we also have, and we, you know, we don't talk about it a lot, a very close relationship with VMware. We're running a very large private uh, virtualization practice for our customers on VMware. So there's opportunity for everyone and Waxspace is very much about giving customers choice. So if the customer chooses to use a VMware stack with, with EMC on the back end, we're happy to help customers do that if it makes sense. But if the customer was, needs OpenStack and decides to pick and choose components when you use EMC that's back in there, we're more than happy to do that. OpenStack is not just about open source, it's about open decisions. Let me ask you a question. Since you have a background in solutions architecture and understanding a lot of the technology, certainly in the hosting side, that's like, I look at the bare metal, the facility side, and you need that requirement. Everyone has to go to the cloud at some level. But, but I got to ask you about OpenStack in context to the, your customers now on the enterprise side. Why do you think OpenStack is, is so popular and, the, and there's such high interest for enterprise? What is the reason? Is it just demand or is it the methodology? Is it the approach? Both? What's your take on that? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a trying to find a way to bring that cloud benefits to the, the private data center. And these IT organizations are, are really struggling. Rogue IT, departmental IT is going out, spinning up in, 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 in the clouds, in public clouds, and the centralized IT is losing control over those assets that they've been given domain and, and are required to have control of. Right? So you're seeing more and more uh, critical data being pushed into to simple services like Dropbox or applications being developed on Amazon. So central IT is trying to find a way to be able to balance the flexibility of a cloud delivery model along with the controls they need in their environment. So OpenStack is really really the, the other alternative that's out there. You know, the, some of the traditional software vendors, you know, they, may, they don't have the greatest relationship with centralized IT. Uh, central IT likes the idea of open source, they like the idea of, of not having uh, licensing, 
Uh, but they also like the idea of having control and, and visibility into how they shape the direction of the product and, and OpenStack provides that. The uh, uh, Rackspace has some interesting evolution. We just talked a little bit about how you guys migrate to cloud, literally in a nanosecond, you know, in, in internet years. I mean, you really bought cloud sites and you guys cobbled together, you broke things in the spirit of Mark Zuckerberg and all that stuff, but you, got, you guys are now stable. You guys lived the life of what enterprise is actually looking at now. Can you share with the folks out there, I mean, what'd you learn? I mean, obviously, you have a relationship with EMC. Just talk about the things that you've learned, because you guys, you brute force through essentially a hosting on-prem big business and added on a whole nother cloud operation at the same time. And you did it by brute force. You did it by partnering. And there were some mistakes we talked to some of the folks at, at OpenStack. Uh, Jim Curry, you know, he, he was, he was going to laughing but in, in, a, in, a, in a funny way. It was like, no, really, it's, we learned. Share with what you guys have learned uh, in the journey. Yeah, no, it's, it's been, been quite the journey. And the thing that I think the biggest thing we've learned is don't be afraid to make little bets. I mean, the, uh, the, the cloud sites, which was previously Mosa, which was hosting Matrix before that, they were little bets that we made, small investments, that allowed us to really understand cloud technology before anybody was calling it cloud. Uh, small purchases like Slice, uh, Slice Host, uh, which was the foundation, the original foundation of our cloud offering, you know, that was an opportune acquisition right, yeah, at the right time, yeah. and really set us up for, for success. The other thing we've learned is that we've taken some of these initiatives and we've kind of spun them out and incubated them on their own. Uh, and we've given these developers the flexibility to, to go and pursue those things that, that they're good at and pull them out of some of the constraints that, that our more mature business had to allow them to be able to, to accelerate that development and accelerate that growth. So, and you know, if you Did get you work with EMC at all on this? Developers in, that, in, the, in a room, they will come up with some creative Did you work things. with EMC at all on that, any of that this, with the support and, and soft software and storage? Uh, you know, we have in the past on, on this, the cloud site stuff. Uh, you know, EMC was a big piece of that. Uh, we've worked with EMC throughout our, uh, our history on things like our backup solutions and, and now looking at them in our more traditional product lines around enabling us to provide more uh, disaster recovery type solutions and, and application resiliency. So you know, EMC has been a great partner to help us with that and we're learning from each other. You know, they, they bring a, a certain capability around enterprise understanding those customers uh, and we bring a certain capability around agility and, and cloud that's a, that's a very natural mix. What, ad what advice would you have for CIOs out there who are trying to balance you know, the old DNA of hey I had to do more with less, cut down on the bone, consolidate, uh, do you know, and do outsource everything to now. Hey, invest, invest, hire people. Like you said, it's like you said, it's the best time to be in IT. A lot of things happening. Yeah. What's your advice to CIOs and other practitioners? Yeah, my my, my best advice is, uh, uh, you know. You're, if, you, if you aren't looking at these technologies, and aren't looking at this transformation, it, it, you're, you're late to the game already. Get, get out there, start looking at it now. Start evaluating the skill sets of your, of your teams and figure out how to help those, te those teams get a comfort level with this transition. A lot of the traditional infrastructure uh, it, people in these central IT, IT organizations, they're having a real tough time, they're feeling threatened. And so what's happening is you're getting a lot of pushback, you're getting a lot of, of bureaucracy and, and the challenges to be able to adopt. So, Make them a part of the transition. Don't uh, don't let them feel threatened. If they, if they feel threatened, that the transition never goes well. And, and figure out how you can bring them along. And, and that goes a long way. The organizations we're seeing having the most success are investing in their people, letting them know what the path is forward, what what the benefits are to the company, and giving them the opportunity to, to grow and progress with them. So what you just said was self-serving, but it's true. Um, are you concerned that organizations are are not tuned in to that mindset? I think it's coming around. So you know, just the conversations I've had in the last six months are far different from the conversations six to 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. So we're getting better engagement, better visibility at the, at the C-level suite, at the, the senior director and, and at the, the architects uh, in the in organization. So previously, you know, when, when we would go in as an organization and talk about our capabilities, it was all very much departmental. And now having seen us make the shift from the, the dedicated infrastructure to a cloud-enabled infrastructure, these large organizations are asking us, okay, how is Rackspace doing this? Tell us about your racks on racks project. Tell us about how you run your, your OpenStack cloud at the scale that you do. So there's a lot of lessons that we've learned that we're able to pass on this organization. So it's no longer a threatening type of engagement. It's very much uh, collaborative mm. and, and partner oriented. Well, Sean, we really appreciate you coming on. We're, we've been watching Rackspace, very impressed with what you guys have done and uh, expect big things. And uh, thanks for all your time. Absolutely, appreciate it. It's been a great week. Okay, we'll be right back for theCUBE. This is the flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We'll be right back at exclusive coverage, SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of EMC World. Day two of three-day coverage. We'll be right back.